Hello and welcome back. Uh, so far, uh, we have looked at several supervised learning algorithms, including Perceptron and the logistic regression algorithm. Um, and now what we are going to do today is uh, revisit Perceptron and see some of the properties of Perceptron that we spoke about earlier and see how that leads to a more principled and elegant uh, formulation for coming up with a new supervised learning algorithm. So uh, let us start by uh, recalling that for the Perceptron algorithm, the number of mistakes that Perceptron makes uh, depended on a quantity which we called as the radius margin bounds, uh, which was as follows. The number of mistakes was at most r squared by gamma squared, where r square r is just the radius of the data points, right. So, where, where what was r squared? Well, if you had a data set such that all of norm of xi squared is less than or equal to r squared, then it is basically saying that there is a big ball of radius r and all the data points are within this ball. More importantly, gamma is uh, the assumption that we made about the data set that the data set is linearly separable Ls with margin gamma. What, that, what, what does that mean? That means that for there exists some w, right? So, whatever we called it as w star such that w star transpose xi into yi was greater than or equal to gamma for all the data points i where gamma is some value greater than 0. In pictures this meant the following right. So, that if you had a data set like this well you, you if you had a w star like this um, then it means that well maybe this is some line such that um, the set of all x such that w star transpose x equals gamma and this is the line such that the set of all x such that w star transpose x equal to minus gamma, then what we are saying is that all the positive points are lying either on the line or on the, to the right of this line and all the negative points are lying either on the line or to the left of this line, right. So, this condition that w star transpose x i y i is greater than or equal to gamma just means that, you know, there is this separation between the positive class and the negative class, I mean which is an, which is given by this non-zero gamma and that was crucial because we also saw an example where if the separation was not there, then perceptron may not converge. Now, if the separation is there, we proved that perceptron indeed converges and it converges with uh, a finite number of mistakes. Of course, finite number of mistakes implies convergence and we have a bound on the number of mistakes perceptron makes which is r squared by gamma squared. Now, there are couple of important points that uh, we need to um, talk about here with respect to you know uh, what does this mean that you converge with number of mistakes at most r squared by gamma squared right. So, um, the first point that I would like to talk about is the following right. So, um, quality of um, final solution or quality within quotes. Uh, what, the, what do I mean by this? Well, let us take an example to illustrate this point. Um, let us say we had positive points which were all let us say here something like this I mean, and negative points were all let us say here. something like this, right. So, let us say this was our um, data set. Um, now, maybe I will add a few more points here just to illustrate this better. Um, let us say this was our data set. Now, um, now this is a linearly separable data set with some gamma margin. Now, let us take a w which is pointing in this direction, right. So, let us call this w star. Um, now, this w star implies that the line that separates the positives from the negatives is going to be this line. right? So, it does separate the positives from the negatives. right? So, the data set is linearly separable. <coughs> Not only that, it is in fact linearly separable with some gamma margin <coughs> and that gamma margin is comes from the fact that you know you have this line 
um, which is parallel to this W star on one side and this line which is parallel to the W star on other, other line, other side. So, this is just a set of all x such that W star transpose x equals let us say some gamma and this is the set of all x such that W star transpose x equals minus gamma. Let us say this is our data set. So, this data set is linearly separable with gamma margin. Now, it is not necessary that this is the only W star that separates this data set with some margin. Well, for example, um, I am going to show you another W star, another direction which also separates this data set with some margin. Now, can you already think of a W, w, w 2 star, right? W star 2, right? So, a different direction which also separates this data set uh, with some other margin. Uh, pause and think about this. I will tell you one example. So, here is one example, right? So, just look at the direction which is the x axis direction. Let us call this W star 2, right? So, this is another W star um, which also separates our data set because you know this would be in fact the y axis would now be the separating line and all the green points are on one side of the y axis and all the red points are on the other side of the y axis so that the x axis direction is also a valid direction. It also separates our data set uh, with some margin. Now one can ask the same question what would be the margin for this particular w star 2 right. So now if you look at it you know it is going to be like this right. So this would be the margin for w star 2 here it would be for this <coughs> right. So, this would be the margin for uh, w star 2 um, sorry about that yeah w star 2 right. So, uh, basically what has happened is that you know you have uh, two different w stars right. So, one with you know a separation given by the blue shaded blue region because the first red point um, is here with respect to the blue you know with respect to the blue separators right. So, that is the margin that is the amount that W 2 star has whereas, uh, if you look at W 1 star it it separates sorry I should use a different color um, it separates the same uh, data set with a larger margin right. So, now one might ask the question among these two w, w, w star and W 2 star which one would you prefer if you are given this data set a priori. Well, somehow intuitively it feels that W star is a better separator for this data set than W star 2 because it separates the data set that direction separates the data set with a larger you know so to say margin right. Um, now, let us go back and ask what is the mistake bound of perceptron telling us in this regard. It is telling us that the number of mistakes is at most r squared by gamma squared. Well, now when I when we argued this gamma square right. So, we just assumed that there is some w star which separates the data with some gamma. We did not say anything else about this w star right. So, we just assumed that there is some w star which means that in this data set Yes, there are two different W stars with two different gamma 1 and gamma 2 perhaps, but you know because we do not make any other assumptions about the true W star, well the number of mistakes will depend upon the best possible W stars margin, right. So, which means that the, the observation is the following, right. So, the number of mistakes, mistakes depends on the best possible W stars margin. Remember uh, for the perceptron algorithm we assumed that W star had norm 1 right. So, here both these W star and W 2 star are in on the unit circle we can make that assumption, but then one has a smaller margin let us say this gamma gamma was just um, maybe this gamma was 10 whereas this gamma was just 1. Now, what we are saying is that well though W 2 star classifies it with only margin 1, the number of mistakes is going to depend on the one that has the largest margin right. Because we did not make any assumptions about the specific W star, it could be any W star, hey here is a W star with the large margin gamma equals 10 
and so the number of mistakes are going to be bounded by r square by 10 squared in this case right um, so which means that if you are if there is some w star which separates your data set with a large margin then the number of mistakes that perceptron is going to make is going to depend on this large margin large number and it is going to be inversely proportional which means that larger gamma squared is smaller is going to be the number of mistakes right so because this is an upper bound right so which, which means that it has to hold for any w star um, with, with with its corresponding margin and we want to f and 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 so this the w star with the largest margin which will have will imply the tightest upper bound right so what we are essentially saying is that the number of mistakes of perceptron depends on the best possible w star's margin right so in this case it's going to depend on the orange line this is observation 1 observation 2 though is very important in the sense that though the number of mistakes is going to depend on the w star which has the largest separation margin the w that perceptron is going to output at the end need not necessarily be that w star which separates the data with the largest margin right so why is that because there is nothing in the algorithm that is really driving it towards finding a w star or w that the perceptron outputs right so let's call that you know w perceptron perc right so this is what perceptron outputs now this w perceptron need not necessarily be w star which has the largest margin why because you know perceptron has nothing inbuilt in the algorithm in the update rule that says that you want to find a w with where the margin is as high as possible what we just argued is that well the update rule that perceptron uses is enough to argue that if there is some w star with a large margin then the number of mistakes that perceptron will make is small however the output w perceptron that perceptron finally gives you need not necessarily be in this case the orange line it could be the blue line also right so w perceptron need not necessarily be w star it could be w star 2 also the blue line right so why because the moment perceptron finds w star 2 right so as it runs the algorithm it's immediately going to see that hey for w star 2 it is not no longer making any mistakes with respect to the data set it's just going to stop the algorithm there and say that it is converged right um, now then is that a contradiction it's not right so why is it not a contradiction because what we are essentially saying is that the if there is a w star with a large margin then it means that the problem is inherently simpler because the class of plus 1 and minus 1 are separated well separated and so perceptron makes fewer mistakes to figure out some line that separates the plus from the minus 1. It does not mean just because the problem is simpler perceptron is going to find that separator which separates it with the largest margin. No, that is not necessarily true because there is nowhere in the algorithm where we have specifically said that you want to find a w that separates the data with the largest margin right so so this is uh, um, this is these are two important points that we want to make about perceptron um, now what is this kind of telling us is that though intuitively it feels that we want to find a separator which which kind of separates our positives and negatives with as much width as possible your perceptron may not necessarily find it though perceptron is a super simple update rule it it does not have the power to find a w star that separates the data with the largest margin so then we ask the question well here is the question that we are going to ask now now given that we prefer separators with large margin right so classifiers or separators uh, with large margin you know can we directly find them <clears throat> so 
So what we want to really do now is that, well, we want to let go of perceptron and then directly focus on the problem that, well, given a data set where there, which is linearly separable, can we directly find a W star which separates this data set with as large a margin as possible, right? So maybe that is the question that we would directly want to ask. Instead of saying that we will find some separator, let us find a separator which is actually good. Now, intuitively we understand that this is important. This, this seems like the orange line is a better line than the, um, than the blue line. Um, but so when I say orange line, I mean this separator of course, right? Yeah. So, so this has a larger margin. <clears throat> um, now, why is that true, right? So why would we want to prefer the orange than the blue, blue separator? Well, one way to think about this is the following, right? So now, again, for this data set, um, the blue line has a very thin margin, whereas the orange one has a large margin, a broader margin. Now, what is the implication of that? Well, the implication of that is that, you know, if you kind of perturb your data set a little bit, right? So maybe add some noise to this data set, right? So which means that, you know, imagine that there is some noisy version of this data set that you might see in the test data. Now, if you have a broader margin, then you are going to be tolerant to this noisy version of the train data, because even if you add noise, you are still going to be in the, on the right side of the, of the separator. So what do I mean by this, right? So let's take an example. Maybe there was a point which was, you know, uh, somewhere here. Um, and now I add some noise that this point moves here, right? So this negative point after adding noise moved to, to this point, the new point that I've circled in red. Now, if this was my test point, now the blue separator would say that, well, how am I going to make a prediction? I'm going to make a prediction either going use, using this line or using this line, depending on which W I use. Now, if I use the blue line, then the circled red point is going to be predicted as, you know, positive because it is on the right side of the blue line, whereas it's still on the left side of the orange line, of the orange of this line, right? So in other words, even if the test is a noisy version of the train, right? So you still have some leeway, which this margin provides you. Um, which takes care of, you know, the generalization ability of our algorithm, loosely speaking, right? So, so in some sense, the larger the width that or the margin that we can ensure for our W, you know, the more robust that line is, right? So it's, I mean, if you have points close to the margin, um, then close to the separator, right? So then small change might not affect the label so much, right? So that's the goal. That's the reason why we prefer uh, lines with a larger width. Uh, but how can we formalize this, right? So this is the informal way to write this question that given that we prefer classifiers with large margin, can we directly find them? So what we are going to do today is to, you know, our goal is to come up with a principled way to find, you know, a W which classifies our data points with as large a margin as possible, right? So let's, let's start with that goal, right? So this is going to be our goal now.